WB Morning Circus, Will Payne. Barry Diamond. Brent, Brent Franks. Okay. <laughs> Johnny Rutherford. And Eddie Gossett. Yay! Yay! Man, uh, when we got the word that we were going to have you guys in, it was a real honor to bring you to town because uh, we've talked to uh, Eddie for about 15 years on the WB Morning Circus. Yeah. Our first time to the Texmo Speedway was 1997. Wow. And we've been wow. there every year broadcasting since 2000. So right. this was our 15th year to come down to Texas Motor Speedway. So it's great to have you at our house. Well, glad to be here. You bet. Up here in Hugo and uh, waterlogged Hugo. Absolutely. Uh, and you spent the night in Paris, Texas. Is that right? We or did. Or you come we in? We did. And, and, you know, the Eiffel Tower looks bigger on television and stuff. <laughs> uh, and it doesn't have quite as many cell things attached to it at the top. It That's looks, right. looks a little different there in the parking lot. <laughs> That's too funny. Now and we you get got, to cross the Red River this Red, morning. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Sure did, we and it sure sh- did. And the Red River's crossed itself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's right. trying to make a new path, I think, is what it's trying yeah. to do. <laughs> now we had bridges. Eddie. We had Eddie close one one other time. You were on a motorcycle ride. That's correct. Yeah. The cop yeah. and you came through, and we, we sure were did. we were at your stop in Blossom, I believe. Blossom, uh, Texas. You know, I got to be honest. The years and the stops <laughs> kind of blend Eddie's, together. Eddie's getting older. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, Only Eddie. Uh, Only Eddie. <laughs> yeah. I, he, he's saying that because I've been telling the story about being a little boy and you know picking up sports illustrated there was johnny on the cover of sports illustrated you know (laughs) uh, after a win at indy and all that kind of stuff so well well, eddie you kind of got you started an open wheel i mean that where your career began no actually it started at nashville speedway i'm I'm originally from nashville tennessee and and after uh uh, the folks back then that owned nashville also owned bristol we had cup races at both places and so uh i spent uh, a year at Nashville and then went up to Bristol and ran it for three seasons before I moved to uh, the Miller Brewing Company and that's where uh, you know we had everything from uh, NASCAR to IndyCar to drag racing of all types and IMSA sports car racing hi- unlimited hydroplanes I mean you name it when we we were involved in it and I always loved IndyCars uh, it to me is just you know you look at it and it says speed that that's built to do yeah. one thing and that's to go fast and so I uh, found myself, you know, at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the Indy 500 with Danny Sullivan, and uh, it was just a great time, a great experience, and learned a whole lot, and, and you know, got to be around what I really loved, which was the Indy cars, and so I uh, moved forward many years later, and, you know, building Texas Motor Speedway, and wanted to run Indy cars, had to run Indy cars, Absolutely. And, and for 19 years now, we've been running on uh, this weekend, uh, coming, you know, a week from Saturday. And, um, you know, it's been great for us, been great for IndyCar, and uh, next to the Indy 500, uh, this has been the longest running, continuously running IndyCar race uh, on the schedule. Wow. And it is fast. All right, more coming up with President of Texas Motor Speedway, Eddie Gossage, and IndyCar legend, Johnny Rutherford. Thank you for coming in this morning. We sure do appreciate you. Well, thank you. It's uh, It's been something to... Uh I've known Eddie for a long time, and and uh, to see the track, the only thing that upsets me is they they built it after I retired. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. You hey, know. Brent, you gonna have a question for Johnny? Oh yeah. All right, we'll do it next here on the WB Morning Circus. WB Morning Circus. Will Payne and I'm Barry Diamond and I'm Brent Franks, Johnny Rutherford and Eddie Gossett. Yeah! Hey. Oh man, what a pleasure to have him in the studio. And then you brought a treat too. This describe this thing, Eddie. This is beautiful. Well, this is the Foyt Rutherford Trophy. It goes to the winner of uh, next Saturday night's Firestone 600 Verizon IndyCar Series race uh, at Texas Motor Speedway. And um, uh, I can tell you that Juan Pablo Montoya was uh, with us a couple nights ago, and and he was uh, looking at it lustfully. Uh, he's never won it. He said, i got to get this one now. So, uh, But it's a beautiful crystal trophy, and uh, a little thought went into uh, the design of it. If you notice at the top, uh, it's shaped like a Spanish mission-style uh, in six different places to kind of resembles the Alamo and there are six points to that uh, which you know symbolizes the six flags of Texas right. and uh so it's a, it's made over in Czechoslovakia, and it's a, just a beautiful, beautiful trophy. Wow. It's gorgeous. I, I'm, I I'm really proud of that, being uh, having my name on it. You know, Foyt and I uh, uh, are two Texas drivers that had some success, some success, and, and so Eddie uh, and some, some success. success. <laughs> the track, the track uh, an named it after us, us. <laughs> and uh, it's, it's an honor. Oh, well, it's an honor to have it in the studio. Brent, you've got, all right, your next up question. Well, I just want to ask you, uh, I, you know, Johnny, we've been through all this stuff with Indy, you know, the cars flying backwards, uh, you know, lifting off, didn't happen during the race. Uh, 
when you look at Texas, I mean, it's got the high banks and everything. What do you expect? You think they're going to stick to the ground? You just had to go right to that, didn't you? Wow. <laughs> I did. Just, no just right, right well, that's, to that. That's the one thing that everybody liked. Uh, no, I, you know, obviously, the, the, we, they, IRL tried to take uh, and make the cars distinct. Yes. In other words, let, they let Honda develop the aero package for their cars. And they let Chevrolet design the aero package for their cars. Well, the Chevrolet one we we saw at Indianapolis, when you turn it around backwards at over 200 miles an hour, it wants to fly, and it did. And Alio Castroneves got upside down. Eddie Carpenter got upside down. But I think Eddie's and and uh, Hinchcliffe's was a situation of uh, failure, right. the, the uh, suspension failure or or overdriving a car. Uh, but anyway. Uh, I, I, you know, it can't say they're going going to be going close to 220. I'm sure. Wow. At at uh, Texas Motor Speedway on, on June the sixth, and I, yeah, I'm not going to go out on a limb. I think probably they've they've uh, the, both sides have looked at their package and it's going to they're going to create something to probably stop that. Like the NASCAR cars have the flaps when you get backwards, they flap and kills the lift on any right. particular portion or relieves a pressure that would make it fly. So I'm sure they may have uh, something. It'll be interesting to see what they come up with. Well, in another big story going in the race, of course, Montoya comes back from 30th to win the Indy, uh, which is just huge. And, you know, he's a big fan favorite, but uh, he's looking forward to Texas. The Penske people have done well there. Yes, uh, they have. They're, they, Roger Penske does well everywhere. That's true. <laughs> uh, you just, but they you really got, like Texas. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, Texas is is definitely a target, and uh, it's uh, interesting to see. Uh, you know, a lot of a lot of things depend on the build up going into uh, what are the what are the engineers going to come up with. Uh, normally they go right back to the last setup that they had success with on a car and that doesn't always work you know it's it's a different time different different uh, situation uh, the weather's different the track is is a little different so you you have to uh, build on what you got where you are all right we'll take a quick break we'll be back with more eddie gosha johnny rutherford in studio here on the k95.5 morning circus Awesome. Wow. Just, just one more. Put it right in there. <coughs> Sorry, I went right there. Wow. Just right That's in there. That's all right. That's all right. As soon as I get this stuff <laughs> out. Ow. Ow. <laughs> now, I, I, I tell you that they're, they'll come up with something because they got all these oh, I think multi million so, yeah. dollar engineers and stuff. Um, yeah, it's it's amazing. It was only one one particular section of the Chevrolet rear uh, on the side pods. Mm hmm. The rear uh it was interesting you could see some cars during the race it looked like they had mud flaps with the number of the car right, on them right. that was the honda yeah because they had the flat place right. down low to put right. the numbers chevrolet's is up inside and it's angled so mm -hmm. that it would create a a lift situation yeah. mm. going backwards we saw that in the sprint cop because i i wings. yeah those new cars and, are just phenomenal well oh. yes i mean they're, but they're they're <laughs> in a, yes a, uh, uh, well, no, you know what? That's that a great, hey, Brent, that's a great question. Hang on, let's ask that question about the new cars versus <coughs> the old cars. You ready? Okay. WB Morning Circus, Will Payne, Barry Diamond, Brent Franks, Johnny Rutherford, and Eddie Gossett. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much for coming in studio at the WB Morning Circus. And, uh, you know, two questions for Johnny, because uh, we've got to take advantage of you when you're here. No doubt about that. <laughs> I'm going to throw the softball, though, because I want to know, how does a guy from Texas get into open wheel racing? That you're like a a pioneer in that. We didn't hear that in the early days. I mean, that, it was always indie, indie, indie. Or you know, um, yeah, yeah. Anyways, how, how does how does a guy from Texas, you know, get into open uh, wheel racing? I desire, uh, world's worst case of the want tos. I wanted to drive a race car since I was a nine year old. Saw my midget racing in Tulsa, Oklahoma. My dad was in the the uh, Air Force there, and, and so took me to a race and I, I got to see those cars uh, you know brightly you know, colored paint jobs and chrome glinting in the lights and everything and I wanted to drive race cars grew up with that and uh, my first big strike in racing I, I 
started it in Dallas at the old Devils, the old Devils Bowl Speedway, and uh, uh, season there, and the next season, half season, Jim McElreath and I left and went up into the Midwest to try to make our fortune and make it to the big time, and uh, got uh, got into IMCA fair circuit racing, sprint cars, love sprint car racing, and. Wow. Uh, Back then, it didn't have cages or wings or any of that <laughs> nonsense. It was a, it was wow. a real real race car. But uh, anyway, I uh, uh, just worked my way up. My first big strike in racing was NASCAR. Uh, I had a friend in Dallas. I had a Pontiac dealership call me. He said, do you think you'd like to run Daytona? Why not? I said, yeah. Never, dri <laughs> never driven a late model stock car in my life, but sure, I can handle that. So I, I went over, and he got the guy on the phone that's building the new car and he handed the phone to me and said here talk to Smokey Eunuch and that was that was my ride at Daytona got down there Smokey got me a couple of tutors to help me answer questions and getting around there and I had Fireball Roberts and Joe Weatherly were my tutors for wow, Daytona wow. the first wow. year Holy cow. and I, I went down and, and the car was a fire breather I mean yeah, Smokey had it out outdone himself on this one and uh, I set a new world record for stock cars and new close course uh, our track record at daytona and i won one of the 100 mile qualifying races so it was uh, that was a big boost in my stock got my name out in front of the on the headlines and uh had a car owner from indianapolis call me and uh offer me a test and i took it and just you know that's uh, made it from the beginning of my career to indianapolis in four years wow Wow, that's quick awesome. rise. Now, the question, the second question was the difference between the cars of yesterday and today. Oh, there's daylight and dark. You know, we, we thank goodness the, the engineers keep looking toward safer, better ways to do it. And uh, uh, the cars now are safer than they've ever been. We witnessed some pretty horrendous accidents, and the one of Hinchcliffe's was, uh, you know, to have a part of the car come through the tub itself and and uh, give him some uh, injuries uh that's just you know that's with it uh, nobody points a gun to our heads and says you get out there and run you know it's because we want to and we love it and uh but anyway the cars are very good now uh we thought they were good back you know in my in my day and and they were in some cases but it was part of the evolution of the cars getting better and better safety-wise. And now with the construction materials and the design and everything, uh, it's a, they're, they're fun to watch. We're getting ready for the Windstar World Casino 400, Firestone 600. Eddie, tickets are on sale right now. They can actually call the number and buy them today. Easy to do. You can call our ticket office at 817-215-8500, or you can go to texasmotorspeedway.com, and they can fix you up. Or, of course, our friends at Ticketmaster can handle you 24-7. So, a lot of ways. Absolutely. Eddie Gossett, Johnny Rutherford in studio this I morning. I want to school Eddie next. On to WB. Morning, circus. <laughs> WB Morning Circus, Will Payne, Barry Diamond, Brent Franks, Johnny Rutherford, and Eddie Gossett. All right. All right, I want to school Eddie this morning. Tell me about Race Day University. A race Day U is the way for somebody that's never gone to, uh, to a race. You know, it's a big, intimidating place. It can be. Uh, it's a way for them to go and really get a sample of everything. Uh, they're going to get to, to meet some of the uh, uh, people involved in the, in the race itself. And I think, uh, among others, uh, uh, Derek Walker, who is uh, the head of competition, uh, Ed Carpenter, who is uh, the defending champion of the Firestone 600, and a couple of other drivers uh, beforehand. They're going to have some uh, food and uh, ice cold Coca Cola to enjoy beforehand, and uh, I think they get a tour of the pits, and then they'll be up in the grandstands in a special section so that they can see the race. But they'll basically it's kind of racing 101, so it's a great way to go and have a great experience, whether you're it's your first time or you're you're you know, 20th right. time uh, to kind of get behind the scenes a little bit. Now, you can purchase tickets to attend Race Day Uni University as well. You sure can. Like I said earlier, uh, go to TexasMotorSpeedway.com. You'll find all the details, the schedule, all the drivers.
members and whatnot that are going to be appearing at Race Day U, and uh, you know our friends at Coke help us make that happen. Yeah. So if you've never been to a race, that's a great way to go through and get knowledge real quickly. All right. So the Firestone uh, 600 is a week from tomorrow, but to a week from tonight will be the truck race, which is the Windstar World Casino 400. That's right. And you know a couple of guys, uh, a couple of young guys are you know the ones you're looking at uh, in that race. Uh, remember last year, Eric Jones. Uh, he, you know he's certainly made his mark since then uh he'll be in the race and uh some other young guys it's kind of the place where the nascar stars get their start so uh it's a great way to go and, and see who's going to be a superstar tomorrow because uh these guys are, are getting that seat time and learning the the tri- uh, tricks of the trade uh as they try and climb the ladder i, I love the truck series for the race it, it just seems like you can tear the truck up and still win a race <laughs> well you know? they, they don't know yet what you can't do in some cases <laughs> so they try it right? <laughs> makes it fun but uh it, it may be uh for my nascar races it may be more fun than any of them so it's it's a great time it's 400 laps you better be in your seat and ready to go yeah. so uh, one thing we haven't talked about we got to talk about big hoss next here on the wb morning circus wb morning circus will Payne, barry diamond brent franks johnny rutherford and eddie gossip Woo! Yay, morning! <laughs> All right, so Big Hoss was an addition last year, and I love the fact that you can sit anywhere in the infield. Uh, you can be at a camper spot, still see Big Hoss. But uh, the IndyCar, I really love it because, I'll be honest with you, I have a hard time seeing they're going so fast. And then it gives the big board. Now, now you know what you're looking for. Exactly. You know, uh, the Indy cars, they do run so quickly. And so when something does occur, you may be watching somebody racing down through turns one and two, and something occurs up in three and four. By the time you turn your head, it's happened, you know. So now you get to see the replays. You're going to see all the pit stops that are important. Uh, you're going to see all the action that you would normally get to see at home. And besides that, having the world's biggest TV is just one big bad thing to have, you know. Yes, sir. A 12-story tall television. What guy doesn't dig that? Johnny, do racers watch that while we're, while they're going? I hope not. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I think there's an opportunity under under the cautions, you know, and and you it goes yellow, then then uh, everybody slows down, and they guy can watch the replay and see if he what he did wrong to <laughs> cause an incident. Go ahead. I mean, I, I can't imagine. Is the throttle down the entire time? Mostly, yes. Sometimes, lift sometimes, sometimes you might lift just just crack the throttle. You can, you, you barely feel any change, but the reason you do that is is if the car starts to push or understeer a little bit, you can crack the throttle back and it transfers weight to the front of the car just that little bit, and you're turning and it puts weight in the right front so the car will turn a little better. Mm. Oh, wow. Robbie Gordon used to call it the chicken lift. Chicken lift. Chicken lift, yeah. Robin. That or the chicken smash against well, the wall. That, 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 yeah, that's why he hit the wall so much. He wouldn't quite get the chicken lift down. Yeah, where, oh. where, where, where is Robbie these days? Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's in a place where you don't lift. Yeah. <laughs> California, maybe. Yeah. He's About probably it. still a little angry, though. Yeah. <laughs> Windstar World Casino 400, the Firestone 600. I can't tell you how much we appreciate Johnny Rutherford, uh, the legendary IndyCar driver, driver, Texas driver, coming, hanging out with us, with Eddie, the president of Texmo Speedway. Thank you very much to both of you for being a part of the show and coming in studio with us this morning. That's been fun. Thank Glad you. Glad to be here. One more time, TexasMotorSpeedway.com, and that 800 number is? Uh, not 800, it's 817-215-8500. Get your yeah. tickets there and see the WB Morning Circus in the infield. Texas Motor Speedway.